Hey everyone, uh, so one of my customers just asked me uh, why uh, I guess you do a multi sheet approach versus a single harness approach. The idea here is that we have the option of um, bringing everything into one project. Um, naturally, there's limitations. So the limitations is obviously the number of people who are going to be using E3. So um, that means if there are 10, 15, 20, 100 people using E3 and then there's two projects in the organization, then it means that you're bound to multi-user, which gives you concurrent uh, use of E3. Um, not to mention resources, uh, document control, revision control, and you know, things like that. So you want to make sure if we have one project and one project only that everyone is accessing, that we have the proper controls, uh, which is potentially another topic, but nevertheless, um, it is not the case for everyone. But ideally speaking, uh, in my opinion, the best approach would be to have everything in one project. And the reason is something like this. So again, it depends what you're doing, but just something like this, I've just done a typical harnessing, whether it's a vehicle or something like that. Um, so it's given me three levels of design. Uh, again, you can do as many as you want, but this is sort of the basic view that I've been doing a lot of lately. So what it means is we can have our overall schematic schematic is going to be our block diagram in this case with individual pins what's what where where um, something looking a bit like this however um, in this case we have split blocks we have a1 split into two a2 split into two uh, let me just do that um, and then of course we've got you know we have a block in the middle so um, our simple schematic is here that we have our overview. It's the exact same thing. We have A1 and A2, A3. Uh, this is just on the view one. Um, and then we've got the same things. Instead of having individual pins, we have the connectors as a whole. And then I can go through here. If I hover over, you can see there's four co cores. Uh, and they have the core, cross section, everything else um, that we've given in our schematic. It also means that we can design, the way I do it is I normally start with the schematic, but you can actually go straight to this view. Um, some of my customers I've seen will start with an overview to say, hey, this is connected to this with this connector. You know, these devices are what we have in our system. Mm -hmm. uh, they have these receptacles or these sockets. Uh, we need to plug it into the main connector. Um, and then from there, mm -hmm. we then define what goes on individually. Uh, once we know what's connected to what, then we can go to the detail of the schematic. Mm -hmm. Or we can actually avoid the schematic and go to the detail of the harness. Mm -hmm. Or we can avoid the harness um, and you know, go from there. So we it doesn't matter which way you start. The other sort of um, one is, uh, I guess, if the guys on the field have made a prototype, and they dump it on your desk, you would have something like this physically on your desk. So you might start with this, and then you would go from this logic that you built and then plug it in to here, or plug it into your schematic. It doesn't really matter, um, one or the other. In this case, I've got my three connectors bound by my tables. So you can see the information, the signal, um, core number, cross-section color, target. If you wanted to do a schematic over here, you could pretty easily, um, we'll just do a simple schematic of these three, um, placing device view, for example, um, some harness drawings I've seen like to have um, schematics. Uh, I personally prefer a table that represents instead, but nevertheless, especially when you've got shielding and twisting and things like that, I guess it is helpful. Uh, you can see in this case the signals are there. If I click this button, you can see the the logic is already there as far as what core. So core number four with signal 10 goes from here to here. I can select everything, go right click, auto route by core wire, and then it'll give me this connection line. And then if you want to show your core numbers like so, if you want to show um, signal or where are we crossing color? Got way too many tags in this database. Uh, let's just say wire color. 
or we can show a colors for example whatever else you might need um, in their colors signals whatever we can show it so basically it means that the irrespective of how many representations we have um, the logic is transferred from one to the other it means designing becomes a bit easier it also means that we can do something like a reference in these particular sheets so in this case, uh, this points back to my schematic from the table. Uh, you can add a reference to your connector symbol, to whatever else. But in this case, I can just go here, right, jump to schematic, and it's going to bring me to the schematic, which makes life pretty easy. Similarly, I can hold control and pick the P4 connector. You can see P4 exists in the schematic under the main view. We also have P4 in view 1, which I can double click. That goes to this one. View 1 is going to be our overview, and view 2 is our uh, harness drawing, uh, and then of course we've got the schematic of the harness drawing. No, sorry, if we, uh, these ones that we did, we'd have a view 4, which is a schematic of the harness drawing. Uh, it means that we can jump between in E3, but like I said, uh, you can use these references. So if you were to export the overall schematic to PDF. Um, <coughs> once it loads, we can also go to. Um, we can click on these references, and it'll jump to the particular pin in here. We can have a pin from the schematic to the harness drawing, or whatever else there are. Um, there's a few sort of jumping abilities, so you can put a reference between the schematic to the harness drawing, the schematic to the layout, layout, you know, whatever else. So. Um, it just means once you place a connector, it already has that particular attribute um, or that placeholder for the reference. So just like the table did, um, as soon as you click it, it goes to the relevant one. So um, that works in a PDF, which is pretty handy. So um, it all depends exactly on a few things, but having everything as a global is going to be beneficial for the design side of things. Um, if you are using multi-user, of course, that means that if someone is doing a portion, if someone goes to the detail of the harnesses, for example, and then that's used in the overview, um, you know, people can work concurrently. So someone can say, hey, this is connected to this uh, with these connectors, for example. Uh, this harness here, if we were to call it harness one, which I should probably do that. Let me just grab those cores. So uh, call... I've ordered these really strangely called two, three, no. Just uh, insert cable. Let's call the bonus one. So if I go back over here, um, you can see if I hover over here, you'll see Tarnus 1, call 1, 2, or whatever else. I can rename them. You can also put the cable name, <coughs> which is what you'd probably want. Let's say this is going to be Harness 1. Um, so basically, yeah, um, these receptacles, someone will plug it in, and then someone else can come in and define Harness 1 as far as what it actually is. So uh, again, there's a few different ways of approaching it. Uh, having an overall means that uh, there's more consistency between. It also means that if I was to change this uh, here and say this P2, if I go to my harness drawing just as an example, uh, and find my P2, if I go over here and I just say this is going to be called, oops, uh, connector one. Um, then it means that in all my pages, connector one, connector one, 
to nectar 1. So irrespective of where I am, what representation it goes across. If I change my part number and things like that, it will change accordingly. If I want to change this 06 to a 6 pin, um, depends on my settings, it will either change the receptacle if it's a dynamic block, but if it's a device block, which is set, it won't let me put more pins or less pins than the connector. So you want, let me, you let me change the DTO6 to any of the variants. So if, for example, um, you know, uh, beatable weight or something like that. Um, so different colors or whatever it might be, um, as long as it's a valid of this one. So where I say that, I mean, my connector has it's not visible here, but the connector's got valid many connectors. So as long as they are lined up, um, then you're good to go. So um, you can swap them over. There are constraints, um, but of course it means that if there's a change in the harness drawing, if there's a change in the schematic, uh, then everything else effects. So what I mean by that is for simplicity's sake, I'm going to unplug that one on both my views. And if I was to go and device properties, <coughs> just change it to a DTO6 success. And you can click on the drop down, but you can just change it. So you can see here, for example, there are the first four pins are placed. That's changed to no six. Potentially, I could grab those two and place them as well. Um, but specifically, if I go to my harness drawing, you'll notice that the O here six. In this case, it's changed to the front view, but you can change the connector view and be bigger and things like that. So um, yeah. Um, the consistency sake is good, like I said, just be, provides another challenge with obviously licensing as well as um, control of it. <coughs> uh, in some cases, doing it project by project or harness by harness is okay. Uh, otherwise, I've seen some people will do an overview as a project and then they'll split the harnesses as individual E3 projects. That way they have um, this overall system architecture. Uh, and then references to the harness, but then each project will be its own harness and things like that. So it <coughs> does potentially reduce the need for multi-user, but of course it keeps consistency as far as um, you know an overview and, and everything else. So um, hopefully this provides some benefit, understanding. Uh, any questions as always, let me know. Um, thanks for watching. Thank you.